whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we also don't be intimidated when I said like, you know, sometimes we go for three hours. Like, no, we're not doing three hours. Yeah, you know, like uh, marathon. I've done it. I've done those before. Um, and they're all. I mean, they're warranted. You know. I mean, I, I was on like this crazy podcast with um, um, uh, Lowell and and Budgie. I don't know if you know who they are from The Cure and and Susan the Banshees. Oh, I was wow. like their guest, and 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 it went forever. And they made it into two podcasts and shit. I was like, this is whatever. I'll do whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, it was great. So, whatever. We'll do three hours. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see. I mean, because I've, like, known you in the sense of known you for, like, a long time. But we've never actually really, like, talked at length at all, really. I mean, it's yeah. just been crossing, crossing. I mean, last time I saw you in person was 2015 when I think it was Head Wound City was opening for Marilyn Manson. Oof. at that place in downtown LA. Yeah. But it was like a secret or like a private show that my friend's dad got us into. No, it was a regular show. Oh, was that regular? Yeah, it was, yeah, Cause yeah. it was small. It was like a small. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was like a regular show, but everyone was seated. I remember when we played, uh, it was crazy to look out because er you, everyone just like had their phones look like they were just like yeah. doing their own thing. So their, their faces were glowing. It was yeah. crazy. Like 500 people or however many people just glowing faces. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not the vibe for like, oh, fuck no, they didn't like us. They were just like, fuck this band, you know? Oh, and they so didn't even all, know you. They were just, they're all man. bored. Just like looking at garbage. Ah, that sucks, man. No, it was great. I, I was yeah. so sick. It felt good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause yeah, you've always kind of like, yeah alienating or rubbing rubbing certain people people rubbing people the wrong way who needed to get rubbed the wrong way maybe is part of it yeah well um, other people in headwind city really liked Marilyn manson and i never did and i knew he was a fucking turd so i was like dude whatever we'll just do the shows and like so the negativity to me was like kind of cool you know like if these yeah. are like super fans that only want to you know that aren't i mean whatever you don't have to like the opening band but i just was like there's a lot to it. It's people, it, like yeah. a philosophical thing, I guess. But I, I was like, yeah, this is cool. Fuck these people and fuck this band and fuck our band. Like, it's just, it was, like, <laughs> it was just like an experience, you know? This is like everything. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you don't remember running into me because it's very likely that I was behaving like an absolute jerk off because it was me and, and my former. You know what it was? It wasn't that it was a private show. It was that my bandmate at the time from Psalm Zero. I don't know if you even caught wind of that band, but it was. He, his dad got us into this after this Marilyn Manson after party afterwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. And that was, was the thing. Yeah. That was, it was bro. I mean, it was like he, Manson, like the, the, the scene of him was like out of like, I didn't even think this was really a vibe, especially with like weirdos. It was like literally him lying back with like 10 models yeah. just like around him, like in a cartoon, like feeding him grapes and shit. Yeah, it and, was pretty and, weird. And then he like threw, he, it, yeah, like he like threw that Serbian Coke dealer in the pool for like no reason. Huh. I remember, remember my this? friend Alicia jumped in and took her clothes off and was like, called him a pussy because he oh. wouldn't get, get in the pool. And I was like, <laughs> Alicia was like ready to fuck him up, you know? And he was just, he was like too cool or whatever. And she was just like, get in here, you fucking poser. And then he didn't. And then they threw her out. Yeah, it was a weird night. Yeah, we got we got thrown out too because my bandmate, <laughs> my my bandmate, we we had bought coke from the Serbian coke dealer because we were <laughs> idiots. It's, I don't I don't like I don't do that anymore. But we were like about it, and and it's mm. like we were just like, oh my god, we're hanging, you know. And my friend was so he was so friend. This guy is an absolute piece of shit, and we don't speak mm. anymore. But but he um he was so determined to do coke with Marilyn Manson yeah. that he just he was tapping him on the shoulder to do coke so much that they that he he threw us out and then he threw the coke dealer in the pool and the guy lost you know probably like thousands of dollars. <laughs> it's of all like it's all big clumps of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> so I'm like, man. I mean, yeah, we didn't talk at like, but I I uh, I was probably behaving in a way huh. that would be. Uh, slightly embarrassing nowadays i don't but. really um i mean no offense to you but i deal with a lot of bullshit um so like usually whatever like you have to really fuck with me for me to like go like oh yeah that sucked right there's, right. A, there's a couple of people i'm like oh we're here at this in in chicago and that fucking guy's here again you know or whatever whatever it is you know so like i don't you didn't make much of a, a negative impression right, so. right 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 
I was well, preoccupied with all kinds of bullshit because it was like, you know, it was like stupid. I wasn't supposed to be there. I'm like, it's a weird, I'm like a weird punk. And we were at this like douchebag fucking after party bullshit, you know, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that will see. Yeah. See, right. It's like, that wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going to start with that anecdote, but it just actually naturally <laughs> came up. But, but it was interesting though. Cause I remember like when I found out about the locusts in like the early aughts, when, you know, you guys first came out, like the rep, you had this kind of rep that was like not accurate. And it very clearly became not accurate, like not as individuals, but it was like you guys like partied or something. Uh -huh. Like, I it mean, was like, like, like they, they were like, they have Coke mirrors for merch. And it turned out that's not even real. Like that was, no, we had real. like compact mirrors um, that we got for free and we were, right. and we were just resourceful and sold, sold them, you know, but, um, I mean, I've never done cocaine. Uh, right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's but, like, but everybody else was like all about it. And, you know, and I, I could, we definitely knew how to party. I mean, I, I, I you know, like make uh, the best of a, of a, this came up the other the other day where like, you know how everyone's like stuck in um what's that fucking thing? Burning man right now and they're freaking out. Like um <laughs> I, I was talk, we were talking about like burning man kind of people where they have like these normal lives and then they then they like go berserk for like a weekend and then they go back to like these normal shitty lives. And that and that sucks that they have normal shitty lives. I'm not complaining I'm not like talking shit about them having those lives. They for some reason have them. But for me, I always was like, let's make every day an event to some extent, you know, and like not to be, you know, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just feel like, um, make it weird always. And and then yes. life will be cool. <laughs> yes, yes, so. yes. I, I always say that's why I don't like vacation in general. Cause I'm just like, I don't, if it's awesome, then I'm going to want that to last forever. And I'm going to be bummed about going home, <laughs> yeah. you know, plus I don't want to go anywhere if I'm not playing there. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Really yeah. Touring is usually like the, it like coincides with, uh, some sort of vacationing, I guess, if you want to yeah. call it that, it gives you a purpose and then you're in a new city. Uh, also, I can't afford a vacation. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're not playing, you're paying, right? It's like you, know, you get the day, the, the day off. You see Notre Dame, okay, and you like get the gear and you get out of there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. I mean, okay. So Justin Pearson, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna kind of like I like doing these podcasts. That, you know, you you know, you've got like old fans, new fans, super fans are gonna be watching this. But I do want to kind of gear it a little bit to some. You know, there's some younger viewers here who like maybe know who you are, but they don't know all the like roots, like the deep roots of where you're coming from. So like, I do want to you know get a little bit into like the past as well as the present. But in any case, yeah, uh, Justin Pearson of the Locust, Retox, Dead Cross, uh, Head Wound City. I mean, I can name you know a billion billion other uh, projects and uh, founder and head of 31G, a very important label. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm into thinking about uh, like the moment kind of like, I don't know, like the cultural moment that we connected in or like when I, you know, we cross paths and then also the, like the roots, just the roots of where like, your it just your whole creative arc is, is coming from you know i mean like we don't have to go from like when you picked up a base you know all the way to like last week or anything chronologically but but i mean but yeah i mean i connected with justin through my band z's that i was in it's not like my band but band i was playing in um and uh and we toured we did a short tour opening for the locust in 20, uh, 2007 and and they put out an ep on 31g which is a big deal for us for sure and um you like, um, I mean, like that was kind of, I, I'm, I'm into, I don't want to dwell too much on the locust, but like, do you have a feeling about that time to me, that early aughts mm -hmm. shit, you, you guys were like super unique, but it was part of a thing. And the thing has roots in different places. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you feel that? Like, it's like, Hmm. I it's weird. To, okay. I, fuck man. You, you just asked me like, what's the meaning of life? Um, I, mean, I know, it's like, I know, I know. But, but a good example would be like those shows we played. Who was Yip Yip on them with us? I think Yip Yip was. It sounds about right. I hadn't, it was that. fucked up, you know, in a great way. And I think, I think like a lot of it was, um, redefining people's expectations of, of what art and music could be. And, 
it, it seems like, oh yeah, we were like, you know, successful and, but, but we were still broke and it was still, it was still hard. It wasn't like huge. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying like from an outsider's perspective or maybe reminiscing, it was like rad and nostalgic, but at the time we didn't know what we were doing. None of us. I mean, Z's we thought was like the most insane thing we had ever stumbled upon, you know, it was fucking crazy. We we're like, yeah, that's cool. Like, let's, I don't know. Yeah. It's just a weird thing because I feel like we, it's not a, it's not a locust thing or a me thing or a us, I thing. it's like a, we thing, you know? And so when we went on tour with bands like Z's or whoever, whatever band that we would go on tour with that we really, really connected with, it made it like a, a it made us perform better. It made us like inspired and fucking yeah. psyched on everything. So like, um, I don't know. It just grew from there. And that, and that, and that, you know, I mean, I, I, it's pretty safe to say like, I mean, not to keep riffing on Z's or something, but like that tour and like that band definitely influenced the locust. How we, I mean, maybe it didn't come out in the next song we wrote or something, but it like, it just, it just influenced us in a, in a way it was inspiring and that's great. And I think that's the thing that like, maybe a lot of people miss out on, on um, in general. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And of, of course, I mean, we were like definitely influenced by, by the locust. I mean, but it was also that, like this collective, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, when I was saying like a thing in the early aughts, you know, I wasn't even necessarily just thinking about like the, ha like the, the social, like, you know, bonds between folks, but also just aesthetically, you know, the locust was, I mean, the locust or Threlm flying mm -hmm. Lutenbachers, uh, you know, Arab on radar, there, like there's a lot of bands that were doing very complex, but non academic <laughs> music, you know, music that was and, you know, Weasel Walter, who if anyone, you know, Weasel Walter was on the stream, if you all don't know, Weasel Weasel of the Flying Lutenbachers and millions of other bands. I mean, he coined this term brutal prog. Now, <laughs> I mean, very few people were wearing that on their sleeve. Uh, and he was kind of being perverse anyway, but, but that meant something. <laughs> what, what do you, what do you think about Weasel's brutal prog moniker for like, I mean, it's true. It was, it was brutal. I mean, but prog can be kind of brutal in general. You're just like, fuck, this is really complicated for my brain to process. You know, it's not right. like, it's not like simple music, but I'm a fan of like making new, um, terms or genres i'm always i always just dumb it down and be like annoying what kind of music do you play annoying and yes. it's pretty pretty accurate no pick a fucking band and it's like oh yeah that's that shit's probably annoying to most people and i think that's cool um hell yeah I think, yeah i mean fucking weasel's a genius i don't i mean he knows it mm -hmm. i think he knows it um but yeah he you know he coming up with a term like that makes sense especially for what he does musically but also too, like, I think that the, it just, you know, everyone like that you listed all those bands were sort of like positioning themselves in the world with, a, with a sense of, um, I don't want to sound like, um, overly dramatic here, but like, I feel like we had like a, a sense of purpose or we were trying to make a point. Maybe we didn't know what the point was, but we were all confident in what we were doing. And I think that's a big, a big point in what we did because nowadays I feel like people are maybe sidelined by by social media and stuff more so than they were then were like they're concerned of, of people's opinions and like back then yeah. you couldn't tell instantly like is this good <laughs> or do people like this are we gonna be successful you just did something because you had to or wanted to and then wherever that went is where it yeah went, you know? yeah yeah um, you'd get the audience reaction you, you you could feel whether it landed or not in the room then, but you weren't seeing all these commentary and like, mm -hmm. you know, like as much, yeah, this sort of like ongoing, just everyone having an opinion. Um, an, <laughs> an, annoying, this is good because that, that I think was a vibe with a lot of that music. I mean, Z's, Z's was fucking annoying, man. I mean, the complexity, this like rat-a-tat-tat just like going into your brain. I mean, I, I think it's just, <laughs> It's just funny, like, because, I mean, lo the Locust, like, had this confrontational vibe in a bunch of different ways. And um, it's like, when I first, like, it's, when I first heard about the Locust, people were putting it to me, like, these guys come out of hardcore, but they're, like, being provocative within hardcore, you know, mm -hmm. in various ways. 
But then once I started actually listening to you guys, especially, I was like, I don't really perceive this as hardcore. Really, I, I like, I'm like, this is experimental music to me because I mean, it's very complex music. I mean, really, I know you're saying you don't think of it as like compositions, but like it really is. I mean, those, those mm -hmm. rhythmically, harmonically, formally, it's like mm -hmm. hyper complex music. You know, like I mean, was that comp part of the confrontation for you? I don't know. I I didn't see any confrontation directly the confrontation that i felt was not necessarily from i hate these words but like not from our fans fans is such a fucked word in itself but like i mean like people that would go to our show that would actually like us because a lot of people would go to our show that actually hated us and right. that's where i felt then now i'm like oh you're being fucking provocative you're coming here you're fucking with us however maybe not always violently but just like being a dick and i'm like dude we're just a band playing music and you have to be a fucking dick to us and that happened more often than not and so that was where so i i didn't think we set out to be provocative or confrontational i feel like we wanted to do the opposite and even like nowadays like i've got a lot of people recently would come up to me and say when i was younger and i was seeing the locust i, I um i felt safe you know those they, they would say something like i was um part of the LGBTQ community or I'm a trans person and, and you, you guys made me feel safe. And I feel like if there was any kind of confrontational aspect or provocative aspect, it was us rejecting hardcore and punk, um, uh, fucking bullshit, like just macho sexist homophobic crap. And there was a lot of that when we were coming up in the nineties and then the early two thousands. And there still is, there still is bullshit. And with anything with humanity, we're fucked, you know? So I think that was like our subconscious and partially conscious goal was to be like, if we are going to be confrontational, it's going to, it's going to fuck with the right people, you know? That's, and so it was, yeah. but it wasn't like we were just trying to be like, let's be crazy, you know? Cause there's bands that just like, we're going to be fucking wild and like fucking, well i don't even know i don't want to talk shit but you know what i'm saying like yeah, there are bands no, no. like that and we weren't trying to be like crazy we were just trying to make art and the people that got it were part of it and were along with us for the ride and then there was just like these dicks yeah 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 I yeah yeah no 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 this is this is interesting to me because yeah like right it sort of became more confrontational as people uh people maybe they, they thought you were trying to be confrontational when you were actually just trying to be friendly to, you know, well, yeah. Anti, anti macho though. I mean, that is, that that's a big thing and hardcore. I mean, the machismo of, of, uh, you know, in d different scenes being different mm -hmm. to an extent in that, in that regard, you know, but, um, but even I mean, like going back to the early hardcore and then like Southern California, I mean, there was macho bullshit, but we had a lot of like interesting stuff happen. Even bands like, like in hardcore, even bands like Infest or Crossed Out weren't macho. You know, they, they weren't like, they. I don't want to fucking talk shit again, but it, like to me growing up, there was like New York hardcore that was like dudes, like we're fucking dudes. That was my we're next like, question. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, we're just like over here being weird. And like, it is, you know, because a lot of people made it seem like aggressive music that we were doing, like our stuff with blast beats or whatever is inherently for, men and 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 we thought like no because everybody can enjoy crazy brutal music we all feel that there's a reason there's a, a need for it and a reaction to it and a, and a and a we all can absorb it and like reflect on it or whatever and it doesn't have to be a male thing and so we were trying to figure out a way to address that and include people um you know and and also like i mean it's one thing to be like the macho thing we can open this wide up because it also has to do with like class and it also has to do with people of color, like, and especially in San Diego, we, we, we had a very diverse sort of um, mix of things to, to, to work around and, or to work with. And I feel like maybe to no, a normal hardcore band that is macho, it was just like these kind of like middle-class white dudes that were mad about something that maybe might be first world problems. And that was what we couldn't really um, identify with. And, and, that, and, and we struggled with like being lumped into that same realm or group, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this is what's interesting to me. I, this is, yeah. Like thinking about how things are misinterpreted, like, you know, it, because uh, like, um, 
yeah, I think the, the, the criticism that I heard about the locust or like people who presented it to me, like you aren't going to like this. And then I did like it. We're like <laughs> hardcore. We're like, not like tough guy, New York hardcore people, but like Boston, like new, new England ish people into converge who I love, but y you know, this it's like slightly different vibe. And, um, but I think, you know, people would sort of talk shit about like a sort of supposed fashion aspect as though that's bad, you know, as though having style and looking good and being sexy and having a visual aesthetic as though that's being like not hardcore. I don't know. You just cracked me up by saying that like <laughs> sexy. I mean, yeah. cause we did well, get a lot of people shit all over us for the way we looked when we had normal street clothes on That's and we weren't bad. trying to be sexy. We were just dressed like weirdo punks and like, we didn't put a lot of effort or we put no money into it, you know, and people just shit on us constantly. We're like, dude, this is so fucking lame. But, but for me, like growing up in San Diego and I think for everybody in the locust, like we identified with bands like Unbroken, who fucking looked like Morrissey and sounded like Slayer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And it, that, Ian, that was Ian cool. Sinonius, I'm sure you love Ian Sinonius, right? Makeup and stuff. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, not, yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, even their vibe was like totally influential on San Diego. You know, that was a yeah. big deal. And it wasn't, I mean, again, like I think, Fashion is an interesting thing to look at because you have um, you have like you have like punk rock, which is like mohawks and spikes, and you have hardcore, which is typically like black t-shirts and cut off army pants or sh whatever. And then you have a you have a uniform, and I'm not co I'm not like commenting or criticizing anybody's thing, but you have a you have a quote unquote uniform or an identity, and it is what it is. Like I, I feel like you, it's just a way to feel comfortable in yourself and to go out in society, and you can you know like if you're fucking 12 years old and you're at the mall. And you see someone with a crash shirt on, you're like, fuck, that person's probably on the same level. Like, we should yeah. be friends. And that's cool. That's a great way to deal with things and code or whatever, you know? Like, I mean, even going into like the Locust logo shirt, like not saying the Locust, like if you see it and you know what it is, then you're, you're kind of, it's like a secret code, you know? Yeah. And that's not to be, um, you know, um, elitist or anything, but it's just, it's just a way to be like, hey, you're it's on community. the level. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not elitist, it's community. Yeah. And I, I, I like, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that thing of being like, oh, how they look in street clothes, you know, it's it's like there's a certain um, I think that ties in with a macho, a hardcore machismo, like uh, as though, you know, uh, having a uh, uh, having a like a I know sexy, you're like cracking up. It's like you're not into but like having a sexy T-shirt is like feminine. Having cool merch um, is feminine. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Or gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, if you like have cool hair, like that's gay whatever you know it's like in the 90s everything was like is this gay was is this gay bro like you know it's just like everything you know so like uh i don't know we as a you know fucking someone that's a capitalist should be like if we look gay like maybe more people will go you know maybe maybe <laughs> you know, like if though if i don't want to say a band's name i don't even know like but you know like whatever hardcore like a hardcore band like if they maybe if they were more appealing to to not just like head road dudes you know maybe yeah, they'd have yeah. like maybe they have like a more diverse fan base maybe they'd sell more records and fucking more stupid boxy black t-shirts i don't know <laughs> you know it, it's a yeah yeah i don't know i mean Jokes i'm interested that. i i love that you brought up new york hardcore because that was my next question because i'm not that it's a big question but but I, i'm like uh you know I, I was living in la for four years and i i, I should have hit you up when i was in la but i i um yeah i just moved back to new york i'm from new york originally um and i was i wasn't like a like real like new york hardcore new york hardcore kid but it was like a part of my you know upbringing and like i made a video on this uh on this channel like a whole history of new york hardcore thing and uh I've, I've just like i think the younger kids they might not totally know um you know younger kids who are checking out punk and the history they might not really understand how different geographical areas like mm -hmm. you know when you would hear about a band it, back in the day, like where they were from was like often like fact one. And it was like this context, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like New York hardcore. I, I had like never even thought, I was like, I wonder if Justin likes any New York hardcore, like, or, or what, totally. like, how, like how did you look at New York hardcore in the nineties? Like when you were in the San Diego thing? Uh, I mean, I grew up into bands like, like nausea, but that might, that's eighties, eight late eighties. But in the nineties, it was always like, for me, it was like, Born Against, obviously. Yep. Um, and then a lot of bands like Rorschach and 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 even like I really liked um No Escape, which became Dead Guy, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but um I was really like into hardcore that I felt was like uh there was a there was another level to it. What because I do think like the typical like uh, you know 
what is like youth of today is from there. You know, like I, I mean, youth of today was fine, but I was just like, ugh, it just seems weird. Like it's like I can't um, connect to to this um, for yeah. whatever reason. Not that it's a bad band or it wasn't important. I think it was a very important band, but for me, I would have chose, let's say, like Chain of Strength over Youth of Today. Not because of the geographical ideas. I don't even know our aspects, but I don't even know if they're from the same timeline, time frame. I, I think so. Yeah, I'm but embarrassed me, to say I don't remember Chain of Strength. They're not New York, right? Or, yeah. No, they're, they're from they're from uh, like East uh, Los Angeles, like Riverside. But they were like fucking just killer. Like they, I don't know, they felt to me it just there was something else to it, and they had swag. Like they they didn't yeah. they looked fine. Like I didn't care. I didn't really care what the way. I don't really care how Ray Capo looks. I just, <laughs> I just think um, he looks great. <laughs> it was never a look thing. I, I don't think yeah. because I, I, again, like we can reference bands like Infest or whoever, you know, and it, it wasn't like um, good looking dudes necessarily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, I was, it doesn't really matter to me. It was, it was more like if I could relate to it, I, I suppose. And yeah, I, and I, and I yeah. could relate to certain things and couldn't to the other. And for whatever reason, it wasn't a geographical thing for me because I do think there was like such kill, even um, like life's blood. That band was so fucking good. There was so much yeah. good shit in New York, you know, yeah, a lot of good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but what got known as like New York hardcore was always kind of the thing that I was like, I don't, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah. I think yeah, like yeah. Madball, I think, you know, I mean, I love Madball, but it's, it is, it is such <laughs> another, it, it, it that, that, but see, that's, what's interesting to me. It's like, that's not like, <laughs> To, to, the to, guy to, that was in Z's just said that. That's fucking great, man. It's oh, really great. Bro, bro, yeah. bro. <laughs> Act like you know. No. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, like, I mean, just like um, but, but to 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 think of Madball as quote unquote hardcore, and then to think of like uh click a tot ikatawi or something as hardcore. I mean, that is that is like different. Like if those were two animals, like I don't know if they could like breed offspring that weren't uh -huh. sterile, you know, like those are like different fucking species. But I'm, I, you know what I'm interested yeah. in? Okay, so it's like, they're like, a, like younger kids, right? They're kind of getting into what they're calling scrams. Mm -hmm. I've never heard, I've, have you even heard this term scrams? I had never <laughs> I heard this until like, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I just, I just try to avoid it and not, not acknowledge it. But, but, but I think they're getting into like stuff. I mean, I, I, I like, I, I believe it's the next thing from Screamo, which I also was like, fuck that. Of you course. Know? No, of course. But but I, I think it's the word. I think it's they're using it right to refer to like like the like the nineties, like the, the stuff coming out in San Diego to, to distinguish it from the cheese ball stuff, like the to you know, like Scrams being the real deal of this thing that then you yeah. know people what started saying Screamo. I like, feel like a couple old dudes right now. But what is that I what does that even but what does that even mean that the like I get screamo, you know, it's like screaming and emo, but what scrams come I, from? I, I don't, I have no idea. I don't, I don't maybe, understand. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why that's a, yeah. In the, in the comments, like if you could in any of the like zoomers uh, com <laughs> comments on what's up with scrams, but, um, but like, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you want to talk, I mean, without, you know, dwell in the past and s suck a free history lesson out of you or whatever, but I'm interested in like, how would you, how would you tell a young kid who's just like getting into like the history of like underground music, like, what was up like the scene the scene that birthed mm -hmm. you and all the stuff you were doing before the locust you know in the 90s mm -hmm. you know just was in band struggle um and uh, uh swing kids you were in swing kids right mm -hmm. that was you're also in that yeah yeah mm -hmm. um you know like what's up yeah juan in the chat he's a zoomer and he has no idea what's up with <laughs> yeah what's up with that scene in san diego in the 90s that 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 gave birth to you man Okay, so that's it because you you did phrase it like, what would I tell someone that's younger? Yeah, the elevator but pitch. I, yeah, but I but I but I, I don't know if that's possible because okay, it's because it's a larger picture for me. You couldn't like right now. You can just go online and you can access everything. And back then, you had to like go to a show and you had to figure out something in a zine, or you had to like sort of experience it or dig it up. Now it's just all there always. So I yeah. feel like it's a little bit different because <clears throat> in San Diego, pre-internet you know, gr like growing up in punk, it was, you had to really figure out like what was, um, you know, cool or what you felt comfortable with. And, and with that being said, and this is like, again, maybe not, not to keep going back to the New York hard hardcore thing, but it felt like in New York hardcore, there was like, you, you, you know, you guys, or they had it all figured out like, okay, there's your thing. But over here in San Diego, we didn't really have it sort of the same way. And I remember there's this show that I would reference a lot, like in uh, interviews and stuff where I went to see, this is like the craziest shit to me. And it was 
Undertow, Unbroken, Slant Six, and Click Attack Atawi. And it was crazy because it made sense to everybody. It was, I liked all four bands. It was, it was fun. All of my friends were there. And I feel like it, it was like only, that only could happen in certain parts of this world. And, and yeah. Southern California was one of them. And, and it was like kind of interesting to, to experience that. And I feel like that was, um, you, you know, because I, you, you would wonder like, I mean, and I could be totally wrong, but you would think like, okay, bands like uh, Madball, I don't know what they listen to, but like, like they probably just listen to other bands like Madball. Like they kind of just have this thing where like, I feel like, you know, a band like the Locust or something, like we listen to everything, like literally everything. And the more fucked up and bizarre, the kind of cooler inspiration we could get from it where, where a lot of people just i think pick a lane and, and maybe stick to it maybe yeah. they have a second lane you know but like they don't have like all the whole fucking freeway just wide open and like shit just coming in you know yeah 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 totally um, but now with like modern technology maybe that's available everyone's just online like sucking in all this stuff yeah but doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean people are processing it in their music in this in the same way you know but no, yeah no. but 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 yeah on the uh, on the topic of san diego i mean by the way my friend paul has been like subbing uh, in madball on bass and he's really into black metal and has a great black metal band so they cool. go into they cool. go into metal yeah. in any case but but but, uh, yeah. but 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 like what about so like yeah like that gig right like as an example right undertow and then slant six like what um yeah what about that bill would be like could only happen in 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 san diego you know and like not in new york like what i mean because i have an idea of what you mean but like people yeah. may not know you know slant sick like but i well it could happen in new york at like abc or something you know or, or somewhere that like has a, like a special kind of place but i um and i'm sure a show like that happened at abc no rio probably every time you know but for the yeah. most part i feel like it was just um those were like the bizarro kind of shows that normal punk people or whatever didn't didn't engage in you know it was just yeah. it was like it was just like a free-for-all kind of and, and we all had a common ground that wasn't necessarily musical genre it was it was something bigger and i don't know like not to sound woo-woo but like you know it's like everyone had it in their dna or something yeah, yeah. sort of like oh let's all do this thing together um you sound like garage rock you sound like some weirdo i don't even know if i can you know what is i don't even know it's like a chat that's that's like all it Shit, I don't know. I love that that band. Mario wait, 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 sorry, what band? Oh, like, like I was talking like Garage Rock was kind of like Slant Six, and then like Click Attack. I was like, I shit the bed because I was like, what do you? What is that? I don't even know. Click, right. click Attack, and then there's like you know Unbroken Undertow, which are like you know kind of like straight edge hardcore. But everybody wow. just like hung out, and it was fucking cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, 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 there is like a sound though that maybe like wasn't you know uniform at the bands, but there, there were like elements that I'm like that is kind of a San Diego ish like aesthetic. Like I don't know certain, um, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. A certain, a certain right. I mean, there's a certain like, uh, well, the guitar type stuff. Like even the you know like these bands. Okay, so who are the bands we should check out? Right, like Heroin, Antioch, Arrow, mm -hmm. right, like um, it, like there's a lot of guitar stuff that was already kind of more like on the experimental uh not experimental is one of those goofball words too isn't it but like um but it's undefined adventurous it, it adventurous <laughs> instrumental shit you yeah, know yeah. like like just stuff other than power chords and other than just brutal four four punk you know there's a lot of crazy rhythmic stuff going on yeah. and 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 uh like um and this is why I'm saying, you know, by the time you get to like the locust, I was just like, this is just experimental. Like I'm not even like it. It's just like in the world of like the avant garde. I know these words, it like, but like, um, <laughs> like there was all this. Like I'm, I'm, I'm saying, it's just weird. Just yeah, like labels are so weird. Like hardcore. Like yeah, like how was that even? What, I mean, it was just this constant it? thing because you know the locust was like me and Bobby and, and our original drummer, Dave Astor were like, let's just sound like crossed out. And that was, and, and we, we shit the bed right away. We sounded like something else, but that was our goal crossed out. And then it took a minute to be like, Oh shit, let's get synthesizers. And then we got keyboards and then, and then, you know, people along the way hated us and were shitting on us for all kinds of stuff. The way we looked again. Okay. Well let's get uniforms now and let's fucking just keep evolving into this thing. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't like think it out like, Hey, let's do this band, which is like what everybody thinks of as the locust that it, it had to, we had to like go through the trenches and have people like crap all over us and fucking beat us up and shit. And then, and then we became the thing, you know, um, yeah. even musically speaking though, like we, we, you know, there was one point, 
um, you know, we released Plague Soundscapes on, on Anti, which was a subsidiary of Epitaph, and people were just jitting all over us for being on Epitaph. Um, and um, we were getting, like, heckled nonstop. And so what we did was bridged all of our songs together, which became Safety Second Body Last, or even some oh, yeah. on where there's, like, these soundscapes where we would play a set and you couldn't speak to us um, because we didn't want your fucking bullshit, you know? Yeah. Like, it wasn't even like you it was like there was like two dicks in the crowd but those two dicks stood out you know and it's like every night they're gonna like maybe not ruin it for the maybe not ruin the show but like for us it's just like man i don't want to fucking deal with you being an asshole yeah every night so we're just gonna not let you talk to us and we'll and we'll call the shots it's our yeah. show our, our set or whatever yeah does it doesn't it in a way though i'm sure you don't miss that but doesn't it uh in a way though doesn't it speak to like something about like a a coherence of a scene where like j just imagining somebody being mad about a band yeah. like being in their scene yeah. and aesthetically deviating and they're like mad at the aesthetics. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like a, uh, like, like, like the premiere of like the rite of spring. And it's like, yeah. they're, 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 they're like rioting because, oh, you're, you know, you're Stravinsky's, yeah. you know, okay, he's totally. he, like ruining classical yeah. music, you know, like you're like ruining <laughs> hardcore. Like, like, I, I wonder, is that even a thing anymore? Is there anything where people are just like, these guys, this band is fuck, and not with you, but I mean, just yeah. the bands in general, like what, uh. you know, like no band is getting like beat up literally just for sounding a certain way or looking a certain way. It's like, that's no, like, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's people. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, pff, uh, shit. Well, okay. There's been a lot of, a lot of things like for one, I don't miss it at all because it, it you know, you want to play a show. You want to, you want to perform your music however you want to, and you don't want to have, it's not about like, okay. The energy is definitely a thing. Like we, we need to share this with the audience and we're not, you know, we're not up here and like, we're here with each other. But when there's some fuckhead trying to like, derail something by being malicious and whatever it is maybe that's them make like trying to be funny and saying jokes and also not, like people come and heckle us like it wasn't always violent but the heckle was like i'm gonna perform too and i'm gonna have this fucking heckle and it was always like subpar bullshit and we would know, just be like yeah. nope here here's this heckle shut the fuck up we're gonna keep playing just no. shut up. and and because their heckles weren't even good when they were good we would acknowledge it but it was very seldom but the but it did get violent and there were times where like we were getting beat up and getting maced and our fucking van was getting jacked up and, you know, broken windows and fucking slash tires. Like shit. It's like, dude, this is, this is crazy that we're upsetting people this much. And that's, it is what it is. Because I do think when people are, when they go there and they're just like, yeah, whatever, then you, then you're unsuccessful. If they like it or if they fucking hate it, then you're doing something right. Yeah. yeah I, I, no doubt. You're well aware of that, but teetering on the like side of violence where you're like, this hurts. Or this hurts financially, you know. Then we're then you're like, this is this is maybe maybe need to. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. So even in like post locust stuff that I've done, like, and this isn't a this is like this might okay. So I don't mean this is not a diss on 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 the bands that I'm going to reference here, but like, and I get why. But like, Retox went out on tour with Off, who I fucking love, and this is like early Off. Mario Rubicaba was on drums. It they were our friends, Keith is a friend of ours. Like it was rad, but every night this is an older, usually an older crowd. They wanted like punk rock, you know, I mean, and no discredit to off. Cause I think off was probably my favorite band that Keith Morris did, but everyone wanted Keith Morris's black flag or Keith. Oh, Morris oh off. I forgot that that's who that is. Okay. Yeah, that's so, Keith Morris. Okay. So that's a way older crowd. That's yeah. This is well, Keith Morris yeah. of the circle jerks. Sure. Anymore. But yeah. so it was like, got violent like okay so we would come out and play and people would be like throwing fucking full cans of beer at us or like spitting on us i'm like dude you know like it's just 30 minutes man and these people asked us <laughs> to be here just shut the fuck up for 30 minutes like i get it we're and and i don't even think of retox as a brutal band but in comparison to like off being like more like traditional punk rock we were pretty fucking brutal like it was loud and kind of gross and and, you know, it was like this rabid dog in the, on stage, you know, like, you know, and like we, they wanted like, that's the sound, you know, yeah. punk. they wanted like punk and, and we weren't going to give them that. And it, yeah. and it did get, and it's just like, so it's not that like, I don't know who it is. Like who, who you, you know, the, the um, point yeah. is like, you're making an impact. Uh, yeah. And that's yeah. great. Well, that's uh yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure how, if you're familiar with extra life, my main band that yeah. people know, but I get, yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I've, I, 
I got called a faggot on stage in real time. <laughs> yeah. Literally, literally yeah. just, I mean, the shirt doesn't help, but, but like, um, but, but, say, but, um, yeah, like just for the way I'm singing was like too oh. gay. And I'm just like, bro, like, what, you, what, have like you, recently? I'm like, have you heard singing before? This is what yeah. singing is. Yeah. But, um, like, I think maybe singing is a little bit gay. That's why it rules. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, um, no, this was like when Extra Life first hit, like in 2009. Oh, yeah. Uh, so people but, are still uh, really fucked. I guess, but it wasn't in a, some kind of tough guy scene at all. It's like, we're like opening, we were opening for Deer Hunter. I'm like, yeah, you think people have their shit together. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, neither of us can bench a whole lot, bro. Like, it's not like no one's a macho man here. Why am I? Yeah. Anyway? But, um, but, but maybe, yeah. I mean, that's another thing, too, is like um, I remember hearing from my friend Chris Hathwell, who was in Moving Units. They toured with Nine Inch Nails, and he said, like, people just from the first note just wanted to destroy them. You know, yeah. they they just wanted Nine Inch Nails. And I get it. You know, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of shows where, like, awesome bands just got crapped on because they were just like the support act for the thing and that's yeah. just how it goes i mean maybe that's a way to harden yourself you know for the world as a band i, I'm, I'm not, mm -hmm. i don't know yeah i'm kind of yeah. like yeah let's do this this is how it's gonna be you know yeah yeah right. yeah F folks in the comments are bringing up liturgy that's probably the most recent example right of like a band who got hated simply for their aesthetics and because because then you're they're treading on are you a liturgy fan at all? Yeah, or? yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I would imagine you would be. Um, so yeah, because then you're treading on black metal territory. So there still is the possibility, you know, that homophobia or the sexism yeah. or transphobia. It turns out, right? Or white power um, shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Oh yeah, and black metal for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, I mean that's kind of like okay, yeah. So I, this is interesting to me though, right? So like. Okay, I definitely don't want to get into politics in the sense of like specific. Wait, wait, let me derail this because the black metal thing is crazy. So maybe yeah. someone in the comments could talk about this because I always like, what band is this? There, someone told me this story about this black metal band that they were like so evil. They were like, we're so fucking evil and we hate God so much that we're just going to butt fuck each other. And like, that was like what they did. And I was like, dude, that's so rad. <laughs> <laughs> like, if someone knows what that band is, I, I need to buy their record. So if anybody. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, a, well, that's, that's like the ultimate, you know. Right, right, right. True. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah, better than like yeah, white power stuff, I guess. I don't know. Anyhow, sorry. Yeah, Go, yeah, yeah. I fucked up this conversation. What were you saying? Not at all. Not fucking it up at all. I, I was just going to, you are literally being the conversation. Um, I was, um, no, I was going to say like, without getting into politics on the level of like, let's talk about what to do about the issues. But but I am interested in, in politics, like as it gets expressed in, in people's music, you know, and mm -hmm. sort of like what, mm -hmm. like just how it manifests in the music. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, man, it's fucking crazy to me that like, I did not think of The Locust as a political band. Mm -hmm. And looking back, I'm like, how could I possibly, you know what I mean? Cause, it, and it's like, I also, you know, I knew about struggle, you know, your earlier bands to an extent, but somehow it didn't connect with me. And just like, like the past week, like brushing up on, on, on your body of work. I'm sure you don't like that body of work. I talk that way though. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're a composer, Justin with a capital C face it. Um, but uh, no, I was like, I was like checking, you know, I was looking back, I was like, Oh dude, like struggle, like Justin is like a hardcore leftist, like to the core and, you know, God bless. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Like, and then I'm looking back at Locust and I'm like, oh, all this shit was totally political too. But somehow mm -hmm. the aesthetic, mm -hmm. it didn't read that way. Like, mm -hmm. was that like, I don't know, like how, what do you think of that? Is that cool that I was able to listen mm -hmm. to it apolitically or is that, or, 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 yeah, or, or are you totally. actually kind of like, God damn, he missed the vibe. No, no, no. Because, um, I, I learned a hard lesson right out the gates. Like struggle was overtly political. Like everything was like a bummer, you know, it, like we fucking hate this and like, we're against this and that's cool. Like for one, it's like one thing to be like, to talk and say like, we're against all this shit. But, like we never really said what we were for. I mean, we did say what we were for, but it was more like on a, an aggressive m manner. But I think with the locust, we, we had at that point, like, so, I mean, for me personally, and this isn't, this doesn't have to do with the rest of the locust, but like I had grown up in the ebullition scene and it was very narrow minded and it was um, excluding people that were like not being political or that didn't have lyric sheets or whatever. I remember they shit all over Antioch Arrow, like in heart attack and stuff. And I was like, Oh, well, fucking Antioch Arrow is probably the best band at, of, ever of that time. And I was like, uh, I'm going to identify with them and not identify with 
this sort of like weird, um, almost conservative um, political ideology in hardcore. And so, so you know, the locust. I never, we never strayed politically. I mean, we actually were like probably the most political band I had ever been in. More, more so than struggle because we were making a lot of um, a lot of bigger moves, like not playing Clear Channel and only playing a 21 or a all ages shows yes. like things kind of fucking with us financially. Uh, we were getting like, we were like losing really cool tours because they're like, wait, you won't play clear channel. And we're like, absolutely not. You know, and clear channel was the predecessor to what is now on live nation. And it's harder to avoid it. Now I do play live nation shows, but at the time, you know, this is clear channels, like huge propaganda machine for the first war in Iraq it was like used by the Bush administration. We, you know, and so we were having this opposition to this entity that was essentially capitalizing off of music. And we, we were like, we're not going to do those. So we, so we were like getting these fucked up tours that were like a hassle for everybody, including us, just to kind of keep stuck, you know, sticking to our politics. And it, it was weird because we were like noticing that um, if you were uh, subversive about your politics, it, you you could get in and get through to people much easier than if you're like, here we are, fucking hate all pigs, like burn the American flag, you know, whatever the fuck struggle was doing, you know, and like yeah. that was just alienating. Even even like if you were like on that level and you're like, yeah, I hate cops and I and I'm and I'm totally down to burn the flag or whatever the fuck it was that struggle was going for, it was still a little like jarring. Like you couldn't you couldn't like enjoy yourself you had it's to be not like, fun yeah you had to be like yeah. fucking pissed you know like yeah. injustices and that and those are very real things but like let's experience something musically and have a message and and experience something and 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 maybe <clears throat> have enjoyment in it to some yeah, extent yeah well that well that's the thing is like the locust struck me as fun man like that's the thing and it's like politics to me when I think of the word politics, I do not think of a good time. I think of, <laughs> I, I think of like a homework assignment uh -huh, uh -huh. and homework is good, but I mean, yeah. but you know, I think of just like, we've got to do this and that. I'm like, all right. Okay. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not like, uh, yeah, it's not sexy. You know, it's not, you know, so, um, <laughs> but, but also too, like politics is interesting because, um, I think that like comedians who can make you laugh in about like a political topic, is is a it's a pretty good way to get through to someone someone on the other side of the aisle. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you can make a joke, a tasteful joke. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to cite a, a, a comedian that like, off the top of my head, and I'm failing miserably. But yeah, like, yeah. Well, like, you know, I mean, you could. I know. What you I mean, mean yeah. let's go back to like the the best of all time, Richard Pryor. You know, like he would make these really fucking great jokes based on race, and I think it would like resonate with people that were like not you know like non-people of like you know like whatever yeah, like yeah white yeah. white people like white yeah. people are like fucking that guy's funny he's talking about cocaine and race relations and you're like oh yeah and you know then he like kind of got in there and it was yeah, yeah. yeah i think totally. that's a good thing i think it's good man you, i i I've, I've said this story a few times where like going back to like connecting with people and and, and not being so um you know sort of like militant about it like I'm going to say this, like I fuck all white supremacy and fuck the KKK. But with that being said, I like somehow accidentally started communicating with the grand grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan from, um, from um, somewhere in Tennessee at one point on Facebook. And it was because anonymous did this doxing thing where they listed all these people from the clan. And I was like, Oh, this shit's sick. And there was an article. And I posted the article and I was like, fucking, this is pretty rad anonymous. And then um, people were like, commenting like in the in the section about like how fuck the kkk blah 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 and then this guy chimes in he's like you know this is like really good publicity for the ku klux klan this is like a recruiting thing and it turns out it was this guy and he was like yeah he, fuck the guy or whatever his politics but with that being said he, he kind of kept his like composure and everyone kept just like being fuck you and fuck off and blah and which is you know warranted but he kind of kept it cool and so at yeah. some point we kind of had this like side conversation where i was like um i don't i don't know how we even got to this point and, and i if part of me was like if i piss this guy off he sees who i am he fucking knows i'm not in a band on tour he's just gonna come and kill me like his facebook thing was like gnarly with like guns and shit you know it's like oh yeah i'll oh, just yeah him. or his the peons that like are following him will but um anyhow so like at one point we started talking about dave Chappelle, and he was saying that like the best piece 
of American comedy, he called it American comedy, was the the blind Ku Klux Klansman skit. Right. And I don't know if you've seen that. It, of it, course. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. So he was like, that is the fucking funniest, best. He's like, he's the best comedian. And I was like, dude, you're you're a white supremacist and you're saying that the best comedian ever is a black yeah. guy. You know, I mean, this is crazy. And I, I don't think it like it obviously didn't change this guy's shitty ideology in his in his politics. But the fact that he was like even open to considering that and like having yeah. a conversation with him, it was weird. Yeah, I just yeah. felt like there was a little bit of infiltration. People people think all kinds of shit and it's not always, uh, co you know, all coherently working together. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're in the clan, it's yeah. not working. Well, oh, you could, I mean, but, but, you know, no, he could easily just be like, yeah, they're funny they can do that and nothing else. I mean, you know what I mean? Like just being, yeah, like, but it, 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 I'm not trying to defend this piece of shit, but like yeah. he definitely had a, a, it wasn't like dumbed down to like that, you know? Right. It, right. It, it was getting through like, yeah, there was something. In he the was just saying like, was he actually. was saying Dave Chappelle across the board is like the best comedian. And I was like, what the fuck, man, this is so weird for you to be saying that. And, and yeah, yeah. I, no, I no, just totally thought that good. was, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah. yeah, like I, I think, um, I mean, I also, the, you know, it's like that, the scene, um, the, the, like the scene that I encountered the locust through with like, you know, Arab on radar and, I mean, and Z's, you know, I mean, a lot of that really does, even in retrospect, strike, strike me as pretty unpolitical, you know, a, a, not in a mm -hmm. good or a bad way. I mean, but like when I think of like, uh, um, oops, the tour. <laughs> which is like man the kids that was that was like my woodstock kids you don't you Dude. don't know about it it was like you know life changing like, for everybody yeah. just all the ju just yeah like all of these really experimental weird harsh um annoying if you're not into certain types of stuff uh bands that were all you know doing this sort of complex instrumental music well not all com i mean because wolf eyes was on there too which is like brutal in a whole other way but um but yeah i i think of a, a lot of those bands as quite quite unpolitical and more like abstract you know like there's this kind of confrontationally abstract like something like arab on radar it's like you, you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like it's mm -hmm. no message it's just like fucked and creepy you know in, but there my, i think or, there is a message there's always there, a message there really is i'm not i don't want to speak for arab on radar but you know eric paul i feel is like very calculated you know he's yeah. he spoke about his lyrics and maybe they're not like you know we gotta vote or you yeah. know he was more like talking about like i don't even want to i don't even want to dive into it he's a very complex yeah. man but like yeah. you know he's cool as hell they're all fucking awesome i love arab on radar yeah, yeah. and and I, I i i you know and i think that band was genius in itself because it was unsettling and it was confusing but also like it it, it was it was um captivating to people and, and it and it ended up creating like other it was part of this it was part of a community i think it, it, it welcomed all other weirdos and it made that's a political thing like hey we can come together under this umbrella of strange sounds and we don't have to be like overtly political but we can be socially conscious and doing this for various reasons because i'm pretty sure arab on radar has probably played a few benefit shows with the locust so you know like yeah. even playing a benefit show like I don't know if Oops had that tour, but like the locals would always tour and have plan or have Planned Parenthood um, table at the shows regionally in each location. Like that's not <laughs> no, no, that's it a is. Pretty, that's a pretty obvious yeah, political yeah. move, especially no, no, totally. now. Maybe yeah. back then it wasn't, but um, you know, um, things like that I think are um, yeah. no, I think, it, um, it, it, yeah. and also the political is like not necessary. It's the personal is the political, so it's like how you live your life, and yeah. and um how you function as a, as a musical entity, maybe you're, you're not like, again, like the obvious politics, but you're doing something in a certain way. Yeah. 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 I think what I'm starting to realize is just that things were more political than I sort of, than I consciously understood because to me it was just DIY. Like I was never into issues. I mean, other than that, I was like, I don't like the Iraq war. You know what I mean? But like, I was yeah, never yeah. into like stuff. And, and, but it's like just the DIY in general has, has a sort of just inherently doesn't even have to be anti-capitalist, but just mm -hmm. avoiding the main elements of capitalism, you know, attempting yeah. to do some to do something different, you know? Well, that's another uh, thing too, is I, I remember like the locust toured with, um, 
international noise conspiracy. And, um, and they were like very political and they would speak all the time about like how they're anti-capitalist. And it, it, it was a really interesting thing to see because I felt like they were, um, we're, I mean, we're, let's face it. We're, if we're, if we're, we all are capitalist in some extent for functioning, like we are yeah. as musicians or artists, sure. but they were like, they had this like sort of weird stance possibly because they're from a socialist country, but they, they would like speak about politics, specifically capitalism a lot at their, in their sets. And I was like, Hmm. And I would, and I would like watch the, the audience kind of just start to fade here and there. And yeah. I, and I just said, I have an idea. Like, let's just, this is when we already started deciding not to speak to people in the, in the audience. So I was like, let's just say, um, let's get up on stage and say, um, we are, um, the locust and we oppose the U S war in Iraq and then just start playing. And then, then 30 minutes later, our set will be over. And that's the only thing we said, what's more impactful, like lecturing about capitalism when you're actually a fucking capitalist or like just saying like a blanket statement, that's pretty one dimensional, but like it's a fucking statement. Like this is the time we're going to say one thing and you're going to have to listen to this. We fucking oppose this war. And then, I mean, we're not like changing the world. We're just making a statement. We're, we're, we're drawing that line in the yeah. sand. We're, and then we just rip and then we're done. And that's it. That's, that's the only thing we needed to say. I think that that might be more impactful. One sentence opposed to like, let's talk politics all night long during our set, you know, like, no, totally. People, people don't want to hear that, which is no. unfortunate, you know? Yeah. 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 No, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah, there's like, like, it seems like there is kind of just even being not macho in a scene. Like it was even just that it was like already had a political vi vibe to it, yeah. you know, just, yeah. just, just, just like being, you know, um, sure. like you're, you're not like four or five, like rock dudes, you know, like we're here to rock or, yeah. you know, or we're here to be fucking hardcore. Like you, if you, if you already get rid of that, then, then you're probably looked at as like something on the left <laughs> i don't yeah, know yeah. whatever yeah. whatever that is yeah 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 yeah. no no ab absolutely absolutely yeah i mean you know we could probably talk about stuff since the locust i'm just focusing on this because it's just like when when i sort of got on the 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 justin train here you know like um i mean probably a lot of people as well um yeah i mean as far as like all the projects since man i mean it's like the aesthetics in certain ways are like certain things have stayed totally the same and then certain things I, I think have changed, man. I mean, I don't know. Like, are, are you, I mean, one thing is striking me, man. I was like catching up on all the retox and dead cross stuff. It's like, you, you like have not slowed down <laughs> uh, the te like the tempo, like you're just the velocity. Mm -hmm. Like I'm fucking like, I'm not even feeling old, old, but I'm like the temp, like the new extra light, like, like, like I'm like, this is slower. Like this is at, tempo wise, fewer BPMs. I'm like, yeah. all right. And I'm like checking out your stuff and I'm like, God damn, dude. Like, is that like, is that like physically taxing? I know there's like almost like a simplistic uh -huh. ass question and shit, but no, you're, yeah. You're, and, this is like as brutal as the locust as far as just like, hmm. you know, high velocity, man. Like, sure. Well, the locust, we were kind of like, you know, we were stuck right here playing um, like with this pedal board and this mic where like, let's say now in Def Club, like I, I could do whatever the fuck I want and I just have to sing you know, the right parts or whatever. So it's a different level of intensity, but, but n not to like steer away from the, the bands that you reference, but, but mm -hmm. Def Club might be a really good example because we put out an LP and immediately I was like, dude, we fucked up, man. Like so many of those songs is just like everybody soloing. Basically. I was like, it just seems like garbly goop. And I feel like it's poorly written. And so we wrote an EP after that, which hat it is somewhat slower on some of the songs and it gives more time more space so you can like go oh, that fucking drum beat sick or that guitar riff sick or the bass line sounds great or whatever it is you know and before the other part was just like kind of like the locust which is like <laughs> like everything yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you're just like fuck there was so much so many notes and so much information in that that brief moment of time it, it's hard to get it you know and i feel like right. hey let's let's showcase this and then showcase that and like let it be cool you know um and that's maybe like someone could be like oh you're slowing down or getting old or sucking or whatever it is and that's all fine but to me i'm just like i don't know i, I want to hear like the stuff i think it could be yeah. better written and i and i think that like um the locust might have done that actually you know to like kind of go back where like I, I think like everyone always cites like plague soundscapes is the best record and that's fine but i think new erections had like a lot that had a, had a bit more slower parts 
but also like more space and, and depth. And um, it was kind of written in a different way where like each person is like, there's like a, a main singer and then a backup singer, which kind of gave it more of a song vibe where before it was just like everyone just going nuts all the time. Right. And, I, and that's fine too, but I, I, I think I'm starting to prefer or have been preferring that for a long time now because I still think New Erections is, is a little bit better than playing Soundscapes. But, but, but even now, like in, in, like in Def Club, I'm like, we fucked up. That LP sucks. There's only a couple good songs. The rest of it's just soloing. And, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to recheck that. I, I think that record's really cool. The, the EP, I don't know, actually. I haven't, I haven't heard the EP. So I'll, just, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll send one to you. It's better. It's better. It's just better written. It's like it sounds... I mean, there's a cover on there, so there's only three new songs, but those that's the direction that we've decided to go in. Yeah. Like, don't yeah, yeah. just rip all of us all the time, rip on your instrument. Like, yeah, pick a fucking lane for a minute and let someone else shine. Yep, yep, yep. No, totally. Unless um, you all like a good example would be like the Z's stuff. Like that EP is like everybody ripping in in like <laughs> in one lane. Like it's all like cohesive ripping. Or like I don't know, Orthron, but that's only a two piece. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, it'd be one thing if like, if Z's had a, a vocalist, then you'd be like, dude, this is bullshit. Like it's too complicated. You know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, what's no. going it's, on? You know, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, I was talking to someone um, who I hadn't talked to in a long time and I'm not totally good friends with, but we're like, we hadn't talked since Z's and he was like, wait, so like none of you guys were autistic in that band? <laughs> It's like I was like, no, nah, it's just the vibe, man. It's just yeah. the sound. We're, but, we're probably all are, you know. We're probably yeah. all on a spectrum. Just, they like, gotta be. I mean, anyone who's into this stuff is weird, you know. But yeah. um, but but yeah, like uh, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of different. There are some differences, though, definitely with like all of your projects since uh since since the Locust. I mean, I wonder like how collaborative because I don't know the writing processes <clears> behind <throat> all of these bands, mm -hmm. and I and I the the. The last three, I mean, like, yeah, like Def Club, Retox, and Dead Cross. I kind of just assume it's like super collaborative, like mm. equal equal parts, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think like um, most of the stuff I do is because it's weird how everyone's like, why don't you do this in that band or this band? It's like it just depends on the people that you're you're playing with. It's gonna it's gonna be different based on who that is and what you bring into the table. So you know, I mean, I I think I mainly grew up with Locust. Obviously it was like my longest band and it was writing was so interesting because if it was Bobby, Joey or myself bringing a riff to the table, we always kind of had this weird way of like not being attached to our own part based on what we could get the drums to create. So like we would come with a riff or a, or a structure of a song and Gabe would make all this shit up and it would kind of start to move a little bit. And you're like, wait, hold on if I take these notes out and like we scrape off the edge of that, the, the, we can do, it'll fit on that beat because the beat was always like the best thing. So you have to get the best beat and then, and then add the layers to it. And that was ha really how we wrote. And so I think I'm really grateful for that because I have worked with people that are like, this is my riff. This is how it's going to be. You can go fuck yourself. And that's not always quite as fun because I feel like we're all collaborating together. We should be able to have constructive criticism and I, and I welcome it. Like I'm so psyched when people are like, challenging me to kind of do better or to do something differently that maybe isn't my comfort zone. And then, and then it, and then it comes out unique or maybe like shit, but as long as I like it, but yeah. you know, I, I think it like, that is an important thing. And for the most part, everybody that I play with is pretty open to, um, there's not a lot of ego involved. And even like, you know, people would assume, um, that would happen like with dead cross and, and it absolutely was, not the case you know like you know we'd have mike crane and i always telling dave like dave play this beat try this fucking crazy click attack beat you know like that because he like you know he's from a different generation he's like what's well, click attack you know it's like play it. check this out and like, what the fuck you know and like get psyched on that or like yeah, no one's yeah. no one's be, no one's like this is how it's gonna be this is your this is the song like yeah it's all coming it, together yeah. it's interesting like with um I mean, not that not that Dead Cross is this way, but with but with like Locust and this, you know, more. Um, I mean, I found with doing really like rhythmically insane, like non-repeating, complex, brutal prog mm. type shit. I feel like the process it works best when it's either like total, like one person writes every single note and it's just like totalitarian composer shit. Either that or totally what you're talking about, like mm -hmm. egoless, no one's attached mm. to anything. 
you know, like when it's in between, it gets like thorny because it's like you're trying to collaborate, <laughs> like you're trying yeah, to collaborate yeah. on some complex okay. shit, but the guy won't shave off the one beat to make it work on the oh. drums. So you're just like, you're, That's you're, a good, you're, yeah. like you're, you're trying to go berserk with this nuts thing, but it's like, you, it, it, it's like, uh, huh. Yeah, I feel like I feel like either extreme is the way to go. You know, well, that, like, that's a good point. If I don't know if this is like if people, if you are people that are chiming in here or listening eventually, but like the Locust song A O T K P T A is interesting because it's the opening to New Erections, and it's it's very there. It's just this like linear piece. It's not there's no repetition in it. And so I remember when we kind of started to work on it, it was fucked. You know, and I was like, dude, this is fucked. We're like, I'm gonna sit out and like, and it was made. I don't know. I think it was like. It was either Joey and Gabe or, or Bobby and Gabe. <clears throat> and we're really trying to like lock in the, the the pattern of the drums. And I was so I just like I was like, do it. This is fucking great. I have no not my only comment is like yes, you know. So like just do it. Yeah. And so like it kind of it kind of like got to the the piece before the 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 meat of the song happened. It's just like this intro thing that's just totally fucked. And I was like, okay, like I, I feel like as a bass player, maybe this is like the Charles Mingus in me where I'm like, I'm not gonna play like all of those notes that you guys are playing yeah. for a few reasons. One is like, I want to accent with the drums, uh, like, bah, like dit, you know, not like, da, 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 da. I want to just be like, bah, da, get, you know, instead of yeah. all the things in between. So I was like, I'm going to just sit back and just fucking grab these weird parts and then we'll rip together. And it kind of gave it more space. It also like, gave, you know, live, like less chance of fucking up or whatever, <laughs> right. you know, but, I, but I think like most people would be like, no, I'm fucking playing that. That's the riff, you know? And so everyone would just like kind of take it upon themselves. And I, I feel like if, so I meant like no ego would be like, you know, this is the riff and everyone's like on board. Let's do that. You know, where a yeah, lot of people yeah. were just kind of like, oh, no, I'm going to fucking play that. Or like, you know, there would, there'd be like these parts that like Bobby would write on guitar <clears throat> where he's finger tapping. And, I, and I'm like, I'm not going to finger tap on my bass. I, I just, I'm not, I, I can't do it like he can. And, and, but I'm, I'm like, let me find a melody in, in, in all of these notes and make something that's going to lay on it. Yes. And also too, like, I'm sure I'm like, what about this? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, hold on. You know? And then like make, but tell like everyone is, a, is cool with it. But like, I, I like that everyone's open to like the bigger picture. Well, of, that's, of, I mean, the so. real, the real ego is being so secure that if someone shoots down your idea, you're like, I'm such a bad motherfucker. My next, I, I've got infinite ideas. I don't <laughs> yeah. need no yeah. one of the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll just like, you know, you can take, I'll throw them away. It's cool. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of sick that, that, uh -huh. that, 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 that particular Z's record um the hard ep that that came that that's the one that came out on 31g because like i don't know if you know the it's not a crazy story or anything but it's kind of like pertinent to what we're talking about of like uh you know before that record everything that z's did was like individual members of the band writing every single note including the drums for every song like um, composer like classical composer like on paper like handing out sheet music yeah but you guys would all play with Sheet yeah. music. And yeah. and everyone and and everyone was writing or almost everyone was writing like so there was this collective influence like this collective agreed upon aesthetic but the actual pieces uh -huh. were like fucking like t totalitarian like king king shit each person but but then what happened was we like had a big falling out with like with the, the, the guy Alex the founding member and there was all this shit and it's uh -huh. like we had this tour we were going to do in 2007 and we were like fuck we just like the we just lost like the main like member, or, like one of the main guys, Sam's the really main guy, but yeah. we had this falling out. We're like, we can't play all that, those old pieces. Mm. What the fuck are we going to do on this tour? And then we were like, you know what? Like we've got such a vibe as a group. We're going to do something like what you're talking about. Totally collaborative, unprecious, you mm. know, like throw away your riff, do this, shave off a note, like that whole thing. And then that's the record that came out on 3-1-G and it's like in, in I mean a lot of people think that's the best Z's record oh. uh I'm not saying it is or isn't I could sort of stroke my beard at what I think the best one is but <laughs> but it's it's like possibly the best one you know like you could make definitely make the case that it's the best so I don't know something about that kind of worked just like work together this like new process and then it's like oh we're connecting connecting with 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 you guys um but yeah that's cool. We were like synced up, you know, on another le level and we didn't even realize it, you know? Yeah. 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 We really were like impressed with you guys and just felt like a uh, camaraderie and, and love like being with you guys on that tour. It was cool. And that's the thing that I think all bands should try to achieve, you know, instead of, instead of like, 
I don't know. Like it wasn't like, like a lot of people, like I'll talk to, they're like kind of competitive. And I, and I think it's fine to be competitive in some sense, but not against the other bands. I feel like competition is such a weird thing. Like for me or for the locust on that tour, we were like, Holy fuck. These guys are gnarly. They're reading sheet music on stage. Like we got to fucking, we got to step this shit up. Not like we have to be better, but like it just pushed us to kind of do our own thing better. And I think that's good. Yeah, no, no, same, same, man. That's my that's my view of competition. I mean, you know, jocks who are honorable, honorable men of character, <laughs> that's how they are, you know? It's like, it's sportsmanship, you know what I mean? Well, no, it's not, because in sports, you actually win or lose, where in music, you don't actually win or lose. But, Why but can't, um, I mean, I looked at it like we can all win. Like, you guys we can all win. win. That's, that's, We're all fucking yeah. going to win. You know? No, that's, that, that's, that's what it is. But yeah, yeah, I remember on that same thing of not competitive, but like getting fired up. I remember before the first z's show sam called me and i was still in college in connecticut but i was commuting down to the city and he was just like listen man and he sounded like really dark on the phone like i thought he was gonna tell me someone died or like he's quitting music or i'm out of the band like at that age like you get a serious phone call like, oh. and he was like listen man i need i need to talk to you i saw orth realm last night man and he was like we we ain't shit dude we ain't <laughs> shit. Like he was like, I, he was like, we need to like, we need to postpone the show. We can't do the show, man. He's like, I just, I can't unknow what I just <laughs> like, yeah. you know, saw. He's like, uh, and it was very, it was very beautiful, man. You know, it's like, that's Sam, a great reaction. Sam has that seriousness. So yeah. 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 I mean, anyone, dude, anyone who's listening, it doesn't know Orth Realm. Well, you know, a lot of people know Mick Barr though. Now, you know, through Kralis and uh -huh. um, through these other channels, you know, Orthrealm was like the first thing that kind of was like so mind blowingly complex that it was just like, how are these guys even doing this shit? But, um, oh, it yeah. blew my mind. Blew my yeah. mind. When they yeah. made that shift from like normal Orthrealm, whatever that is, to the o <laughs> that OV record. That yeah, the repetitive, yeah, the repetitive. Yeah, the repetitive. The OV record yeah. seems a little bit like the Hard EP. And I'm not, this is no disrespect to either band, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like this very like monotonous, like it was like, I don't know, like it was like a mutant like or mutating. Like, like the, it never was like, here's the next riff. You're just like, oh, there's like a bunch of shit going on here. Good luck finding the, the changes, but they're yeah. happening, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyhow. I think that was, yeah. I think that was a part of like, yeah. Like, um, yeah. Having stuff that's so repetitive that it doesn't change at all. Uh, that, that, that's like, that works with the complexity. Like it's this like other form of oh, complexity. But, the, but, the, but when know, the changes the happen, you're like, there's no way you counted that out. This is no fucking yeah. way. How did you guys do that change? You know, like, yeah. I mean, I know, I know the tricks. I know some of the things, but like, I'm like <laughs> this is crazy. You know, like, you know, whatever. It's almost yeah. like you put the hard EP or, or, or thrums OV, like it's almost like a broken Atari game or just like glitching <laughs> for 45 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, totally. <laughs> I, I, I often wonder like in a positive way, like sometimes I'm like, man, have I, have, did, did I, did, have I, have I fucked up my brain with drugs a little bit? Maybe has there been wear and tear, but then I think about all the, like on the flip side, I'm like, I think all of that super progged out stuff, it actually like neurologically is like good for your brain. Mm. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I think doing that stuff, like, I mean, that's not a good reason to do music. It's almost like some scientific <laughs> shit, but it, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like whether it's Z's or Orthrealm or like the Locust, like think about re rehearsing that music. I mean, yeah. and any music, obviously, but like get it, especially collaboratively writing it. Yeah, uh -huh. neuroprotective, Sophie says. Like, I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm, I've got, you know, God, God willing, maybe I've got like a little bulwark against uh, like Alzheimer's or something later, just having done <laughs> like, cause, cause no one does that shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like who does that kind of complicated and then weird fine motor things with your fingers connecting to counting mm. and you're like doing it with your boys and shit. It's like, so yeah. like, uh. it, that's like sword swallower shit. Like it's really, uh, it's really kind of out there to do that. Yeah. I wish oh, I could God. swallow a sword. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I, I, but again, too, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm up. I don't personally don't think I'm up to caliber with, with like you guys and Z's or, or, or throw. I'm like, I, there's no fucking way I could do that. I, there's no way, but then, you know, what's kind of funny. Like, and, and this isn't like a diss, but maybe like addressing the competition aspect of it. When we were doing that oops tour, it, the, the main bands were, were locust airborne radar, lightning bolt. And there was, two bands before, like at the beginning, you know, like op regionally opening. So it was like five bands right. every night, but 
there was a little bit of beef between Airborne Radar and Lightning Bolt, like who would who would headline or who would right. be like in the lineup, you know, whatever. Yeah. And and um, I just remember playing in um, fuck, it was like Iowa or something. I don't know, somewhere like not that great. Um, and I was in the alley and Airborne Radar was playing, and and the the door to the venue opens up, and Eric came out and he was just drenched and you know just pl- played. And the door closed, and the sound and the the same song started again. And I was like, "Oh shit, you got to get back in there." And the door was locked, and he didn't he didn't try to go back in. I was like, "Well, oh, that's crazy." And he's like, "That's not me. Or, it's not us." And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Oh, it's Airborne Radar." And I was like, "Those fucking guys are playing your song oh, because they would set shit. up on the floor." As a, you that's know, right. That's right. And, and they started playing their shit, and I was like, "Dude, that's so fucking crazy!" Like that they're doing that. So then, um, uh, Lightning Bolt tried to like. I think they might have covered like a Blood Brother song and a Get Hustle song, and we were like, "Oh, they're gonna fucking try to cover a Locust song. <laughs> we need to cover a Lightning Bolt song before they get to that." And um, I love this. I, we learned the song. I forgot which one it was, like Thirteen Monsters or something. I think that's the name of the song. We it was yeah, like, Thirteen Monsters. Yeah. yeah. So we like learned that, like for the most part. But we needed to like we needed one more day, and we were like out of days. I think the end of the tour, and like, um, <laughs> but I remember like us going like, you know what? This is the last show. If they fucking try to play one of our songs, we're just gonna get through Thirteen Monsters as like a fuck you or like yeah, you know, like in a in a no, in a no, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I love. They this. never they never played our song, so so we never played Thirteen Monsters. But we were we were like prepping to be like, oh, you're gonna fuck with us because yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Eric had such defeat like no it's fucking lightning bolt <laughs> our song you know and i was like yeah that's a dick move right there but also like pretty rad it's fun this is this has like a jazz musician vibe this is this is uh <laughs> ball it's just ball breaking this is not this is not cr- this is not cruelty competent you know this is not yeah. sadism this is this is ball breaking uh savage land records in the comments says arabon radar is greater than lightning bolt with the devil thing i i always i thought of them as kind of like good cop bad cop of, of like a certain kind of noise rock like lightning bolt seemed like uh i don't know so there's like a sort of wholesomeness and arabon radar was like oh these are the the arch you know the, the <laughs> like not not the people but to this to the spirit of the music you know yeah. always always had this kind of like you know yeah there's this comment here. It says, if the locust covering blood brothers, I, if it was, I would explode. Um, I don't think we were, it wasn't ever like we wanted to cover other bands. It was just kind of like, Oh, I see what lightning bolts doing to everybody. Like we just couldn't let them do it to us, you know? And if they did, we were going to be like, well, we're going to fuck you up because I don't think anybody else is trying to learn their songs, but it is funny because that last night of that tour where we were like, if they try to play, you know how to become a virgin i think that was a song that they were trying to learn then then we're gonna fuck them up and um but i remember like the blood brothers playing and joey was so wasted and he like came out on stage and was like trying to play the keyboards with morgan and i was just like dude this is not acceptable like this is you gotta get off stage man like you can't go up there and fucking talk to them and like try to play their shit yeah that's that there's <laughs> like, a line there's a line yeah, there yeah yeah he was wasted and i'm surprised we even played because I, I remember like that happening being like dude that's really disrespectful to morgan and the band but then i was like man if joey's that wasted there's no way we're gonna be able to pull off this lightning bolt song <laughs> but it never luckily none of it happened and i don't even think the blood brothers were really mad they thought it was amusing yeah i think I, I i would have uh especially in my 20s i would not have been mature enough to handle that situation. I would have been, I would have just been like, guys, fuck this shit up to being disrespected, yeah. you know, like it's just yeah. about respect. God damn it. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That was man. Oops. The tour was like, that was, yeah, that was, that was, that was the shit, man. Like, um, well, you know what I'm kind of interested in. And by the way, you can tell me if you need to wind down, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. like, I, I am, I am kind of interested in like, I mean, not just your music, but also just like 3-1-G in general. You know, we haven't talked about 3-1-G. I mean, most people who are watching this who know you, I mean, everyone who knows you knows 3-1-G. But those of you who maybe don't know Justin, um, you know, like, uh, you know, this is, this is you know, your label since, I mean, since pre-Locust, right? I mean, we're talking uh, like since nine, the 90s. I was 19 right? years old. Yeah. You so were 19. Yeah. Right before the Locust started. Um, yeah. 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 And um, I mean, it's you, you've you've maintained this like aesthetic that's very, you know, it's got the variety in it, but there's also this identity to it, you know, that's like, you know, you haven't like, sw- you know, like, oh, we're rebranding. It's a whole new thing now. There's been this real like uh, like a through line, like, you know, like it's it's a thing. 
I, like I'm interested just I like who <clears throat> Of like the, the the people who are like really vibing on three one G are they like people like our age from back then or like how much like are there way younger kids do you have a sense of like who's I have like, no idea what's going on ever no it's just it's just the record sell you're like what you know no they cool. don't like, sell that's part of the problem <laughs> you don't even understand and this isn't a dig at you but I have so many hard EPs if you want like me to send you boxes oh, of this yeah. well no I'm just yeah. saying, like. But I, I mean, I, I I don't assume I don't assume the hard EPs flying okay. off the shelf. But I assume should. I, have should. To, I assume some of these are like well, okay. But well, a good example is like that. Let's use that record. The CD sold out. Why? Why did fucking all the CDs sold and not the vinyl? The vinyl's way cooler. What the fuck? You know, and it's it's weird. And but but also too, I've gotten better at like putting out smaller pressings, and yeah. I've gotten better at like just being like not saying like yeah to everybody that I wanted to, you know, so sometimes I'm like, I really like your band, but you guys don't tour. You won't promote it. Like, no I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, like, and again, like not a diss on anybody, but like, I, okay. For me, like dude, collectively between all the bands that I have that are on epitaph or anti, I owe, I, I owe them a lot of money and I feel mm. bad. Like how can I fucking help get out of the red? Yeah. You know, and I, I feel like there's a lot of bands on three, one G that kind of just like cut out and they're like, well, done you know and i'm like dude i have a thousand of your records like i i'm not yeah. mad but i'm like take them yeah the, them. the smaller the smaller pressings are a good thing but yeah i'm, I'm actually less less thinking about like how how many records yeah. you're moving and more just like who's buying them like like you like i mean do 17 year old kids i don't know who with the people that club, i don't know, you know? yeah you're not sure yeah well, i don't know a, i mean how about a show so how about a show i mean is it is it is it is it me or is it uh you know the 19 it's, year old kid in the chat over here it's it's weird getting like older and not being able to tell people's ages um i found that yeah it, and so like i'll see a show and i have no idea that that the, that the people are teens 20s 30s 40s 50s whatever i don't know i don't know it, you know it's weird to even like go like oh i'm in a band with someone that's like 58 that's weird uh you yeah know, I, I don't know i don't even think like that you know and or, or, you know, or that I'm going to be on someone who's 31, you know, like that's weird. Like I just, it is what it is. And so um, the people at the, at the show, I mean, to me, I just look at it as, I don't know, age is like irrelevant or linear or something like, or non-linear, you know, like, it's just like a thing where you're just like, if you're there, you're there. And if you're in it, you're in it. And I don't know. Right on. Yeah. A, I'm not trying to avoid the question. I just have no, no idea. No, no, no need idea. to answer. I'm, I'm just always interested. You know, I'm just like, who's, you know, who, well, I'll, who, I'll who are the, you know, yeah. I, well, Def Club just played a couple weeks ago with Unbroken. And that was pretty wild because there were people there that I grew up with that had their kids there who were like stage diving, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. this is fucking wild to think about that. There's a lot of things to think about. I mean, I, I remember, um, uh, Def Clubs played this show in or this venue in Tucson. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but we played there twice in the in recent years. And I remember thinking that when I played there with Struggle, when and when I in my, in my first band, Scott, the drummer of Def Club, was one years old. You know, and like that's a weird thing to think yeah. about. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But we connect in every way, no matter what. So, oh, right. yeah, so yeah, so that would know. be '90s, right? So he's 30, right? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like who's at the show? I don't know because you know like you would think like older people would stage dive but like most older people are like that's fucking i'm gonna break something you know yeah. so it's like younger people i don't know i don't know i mean it just depends again going like not to nitpick at different shows but we we played this show at seisha which you know i knew them from back in the day locust played with them and now they're huge and def club played with them and it was all these younger people and it had like the best best energy uh, probably ever of a show that def clubs played and i was like man there's all these young people that were so passionate and so into it that missed the band, you know, in their the uh, first early... time around. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It was a trip to see that. Um, yeah. I don't no, know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Cause that, that's what I'm, yeah. <laughs> they, they, in the chat, they say Eva says, and back to the scrams, but yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, but that, that is kind of, I am interested in that. Like just what, cause like I, you know, I hang with people that are, that are much younger. I mean, mostly people my own age, but then my friends who are like in their twenties. Yeah. I'm just interested in like what they know about and what they don't, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll mention stuff that I was into as a kid and they're like, Oh yeah, fuck yeah. That's classic. And then other stuff they're like, who are you talking about? You know? Yeah. So it's just like what, what stuff translates and, and like, mm -hmm. and, and what doesn't, you know? Well, like, that's um, it, my friend brought his two nephews to that show with them broken. And I don't know their ages, but they were small. I mean, they were probably like 10 and they, they were just 
And, and for one, I thought like he said they love Def Club. And I was like, really? Like, I thought they would have liked Unbroken. They were the headliners and like people went fucking berserk. And their whole thing, their whole takeaway was like, yeah, but the singer kept jumping off the drums. And I was like, I don't know. Everybody <laughs> does that, right? Or like bands are always, it's like not that unique, but it was like to like a, to like a, a kid, like a nine-year-old to go and see like some punk band where the singer jumped off the drums your first time you're like, well, that was wild. You know, like almost yeah. like, I don't know what it's like, but you know, it, um, it's yeah, there's all kinds of ages. And I think that people are inspired by, like, I was like those kids being there, like whatever age, eight or nine or 10, like that's our future. If, if they were so psyched on Def club, then when they, when they start a band, they're going to be 10 times better than Def Club. Mm -hmm. That's, and I'm so, I'm so glad, you know, to be part of that. Yeah. 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 Cause I, cause I have to think, you know, it's like when, when kids, cause yeah, cause the thing, everything's so available on the internet, you know, there's definitely like 17 year old kids now that are just like, yeah. Yeah. Juan's, Juan's a youngster. Look at that. Juan says, the only reason I know the locust is because they showed up in related artists on Spotify. Huh. And yeah, I know Juan and he's like, de definitely like yeah. the guy who you want to hear this who you want to be hearing here from me well, anyway one yeah. i want to i want to say this to, to one um i have this podcast called colton culture and we're a few episodes away from bobby from the locust being on his episode airing but when it airs you got to check it out because he's he teaches a music class and um a, a, like a music business class and dives heavily into spotify it's pretty fucking crazy a lot of people don't understand the I don't even know any it, the the dynamic and the downfall and the 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 weird dystopian world that music has become through streaming services such as Spotify, most unethical business model on the planet for artists, and everyone doesn't yeah. seem to really care. So I really highly recommend checking it out when that does air. It'll be like a few weeks till it comes out. Nice, nice. So, yeah. It's insane what we tolerate, like just business wise, just what you're like willing to yeah. swallow, like a Spotify yeah. shit. Yeah, you're like, I, I just know. wrote a record and put my heart and soul into it and paid all this money. And now you can just go get it. You can just stream it for free. It just seems like kind of fucked, but um, it is what it is. I try not to like criticize things like Spotify because it's not going away. But I yeah. do think that I do think that like capitalism's fucked and that company makes a lot of money off of all of the artists that it streams and th their business model is terrible. The percentage that they give to the artist is, is, is just absurd. And, and, and the, and the company itself makes a fuck load of money. It just doesn't make sense to me yeah. um, at all. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I do. I, I always think about like, um, yeah, I mean, even the, even the business aside, just kind of like with these, when, when younger people find out about stuff from the past, like, but with stuff from within my lifetime where I was there, you know, it's like, like what what does it mean not that it would mean less or it would mean more but just this different thing that it would mean like i was talking about like how when we were when we were when we were young and i would find out about bands how it would be like this band is from san diego this band has their own label or this band is on gravity mm -hmm. and and then if i didn't know i'd be like what's gravity records like oh it's this thing there'd be yeah. these very specific it's like part of a story you know what i mean sure. it's like part yeah. part of this history of like oh and like it's different than New York hardcore and it's different than DC hardcore, but it's all called hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this net, this network of stuff, it's all geographically specific and it's responding to each other. I do, I do wonder if like when a younger kid gets into Seisha, if, if it's that same kind of way mm -hmm. of hearing about it versus just, it pops up in the thing and you're like, I love this song. That sounds great. You know, I mean, there's yeah. something kind of pure. There's something kind of pure about that, but also kind of disconnected. I don't know, like you know, like or maybe I mean, they it's, really, e it's easier to like get your like to be discovered or to connect with someone across the world or whatever or instantaneously. Where before it was like I would never have known about Seisha unless the Locust played at them at the PCH Club with Airborne Radar, you know. And I was like, oh shit, these guys are really fucking cool. I and I would have no idea about them if it, if I didn't had had not seen them, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's cool in itself too. It's different in, in its own way, I guess. But the label thing's interesting. Like gravity is a good, a good example because that label on it in itself was so um, informative and, in, and in creating a culture around the, the bands on it and the aesthetic. Um, I feel like it's, it was just something like so outstanding, but, but going before that, like I would look at like alternative tentacles is a good example because obviously the Kennedys are one of the best all time punk bands. And so I was gravitating towards like, Oh, that's Jello's label. And I would get the pamphlet inside with all the other stuff. And I would just be like, 
oh, I'm going to just, this record looks cool. No means no. I'm going to try that out or Alice Donut or whatever, like, you know, Tumor Circus. Like, I'll just order this shit and like see what happens. And and that was cool because it kind of made it seem like a community in itself. And I see that with Gravity or Vinyl Communications or Vermiform when Sam was running that label or GSL. Like, all of these things kind of made a a, a, a community, uh, I, I think. And, 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 it does, and that community wasn't defined by, necessarily defined by uh, geographics. You know, it was, it was kind of defined by an aesthetic. Right, um, right, right. True, true, true. Yeah. Just like how like, you know, Z's was like, oh yeah, we should totally put a record out on 3-1-G. Yeah, that um, made sense. That definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely at that time in, in New York, there was like, there was the really New York-y stuff and then there was New York-y stuff that was more resonating with stuff elsewhere. So like, you know, something like Strokes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, that was the like... New York, New York stuff. And then stuff like Z's, it's like, well, actually we like tour a lot and there's this kind of, uh, there's more of these connections with the DIY thing, you know, mm -hmm. real large, like, like, uh, like on a national level, you know? Um, but it's weird how you make like, there's these two ways, you know, there's this and that, but in between there was like liars and black dice and all the weird shit that kind of bridged all of it together because I good don't know, examples. That, yeah. I mean the first like, yeah, yeah. ZP like has blast beats on it. And then, you know, like Nick, does Zinner, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, shows how long like, I know. And dude, what am I talking about? Nick Zinner is like literally in Hadwin City and stuff. But yeah, I mean, but but, are, but, are, uh, but yeah. oh, he's in the the band with um the Black Sabbath rehearsal cover band. Uh, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Nick Barr. Yeah, you know? it is it it is interesting. Yeah, it's like sometimes I'm sometimes I'm more talking about how things like were perceived, and not like what was mm. like actually yeah. happening. You know what I mean? Or like how things were like sort of get categorized. You know, it's like well, I perceived it differently because I remember there was all of this weird press happening. It was it, it, strokes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And like sometimes liars or no, it was Rapture was on there. Like they were kind yeah. of like the hip and the, the Rapture also had like San Diego ties, but regardless, mm -hmm. but then they would like most of the time, all of this like huge press, like nylon magazine or interview magazine or whatever the fuck it was like pretty good side, like reaching magazines They would list those. And then it would also be like, and black dice. And you're like, Oh shit you guys are kind of fucking with the weirdo stuff there, you know, like, right. I mean, this is like black dice was, was shifting from the brutal stuff and kind of becoming the DFA. Yeah. The psychedelic record that was, yeah. That was, yeah. But I was like, Oh, that's cool to me. Like, I, I feel like at least, at least you guys are like paying attention to the homies, you know, like the weird, yeah, yeah. The weird one. You know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Sneaking like Orthrome into alternative press jason prediger did that i was like dude that's a fucking genius right there because i guarantee you like less than one percent of the readers are going to be like oh that's a great band you know <laughs> um, yeah yeah that's 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 uneasy listening without, without any, <laughs> any question like, i like panic at the disco what's this orthorum thing and then you're just like you know, that's, <laughs> there goes that. yeah 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 totally <laughs> man <laughs> i um yeah man well, actually, yeah, I, I feel like it'd be a good time to maybe check, check yeah, respond, anything we want to respond to in the comments, and then we can kind of wind, wind to a close. What do we have here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Age is interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe this isn't a lot of, <laughs> Sophie says this oh, is Oh, they practice. talk about, uh, someone talked about the Queen cover compilation. Those were always like fun to do. The Queen one was the first one, and then we did the birthday party, and then we did the cramps. And it was just such an eclectic mix of stuff covering one pretty, um, you know, obvious kind of band. Well, I guess Queen was pretty diverse, but, you know, like it was just insane. Like the mu musical insanity, like, oh, yeah, let's just do all this crazy ass shit. Um, I think the Queen one was at the time it didn't have like what we look at now as heavy hitters. But, you know, Blood Brothers, Mel Banana, Locust, Dosso. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and but Weasel, it has like Weasel, uh, Weasel doing the, dude, the song Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah, that was a big. Yeah, that, I, I remember that. It was a a big record for like just this like micro niche of complete cycles. Yeah. And shit. But we but got yeah. a copy of it to Brian May, and he didn't sue us and stuff. So like, cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a win right there. That's a, what did he think? What did what did what did he think of it? Did he like? Um, it? I didn't actually give it to him. Someone, a friend of mine that was working with him, did, and um. I have a photo of him holding the record, you know, and I was just like, that's good. That's good enough. Um, but we, yeah, like you, you would think in like the context of things like Brian or someone from queen is going to probably sue us hearing bastard noise cover Lily of the Valley. But um, the odd thing was when we put up the birthday party one, Mick Harvey 
came at me and was like talking some shit and was like, we got a problem. And I'm like, whoa, fuck. Uh, hold on. And he's like, no, you're going to have to talk to mute. Like, we're going to have to, we're, there's a problem. You can't, you can't do this. Oh, and I was like, oh shit. And I was like, well, I didn't mean any disrespect. And like, we're not making any money off of this. As a matter of fact, like we barely are going to break even if we do that. And I was like, you know, and he's like, well, here's, here's mute. And like, it was weird. He was emailing me from his wife's email. I first, I didn't think it was even true. And then mute got involved and I don't know who it was at mute, but they're like, can you send us some, some copies? We're going to have Nick cave, check it out. And you know, whatever. And I was like, I was like, fuck. Um, and I sent a bunch of copies, but then I like, I buttered, buttered it up. And I was like, I'm going to send all this shit. I, I fucking was like sending whatever, like on three, one G just to kind of like show like, this is our label, you know, yeah. this we do. And so I sent this huge box and the guy from mute wrote back and was like, yeah, Nick said, there's no problem. Like, go ahead. Like, I was like, cool. This yeah. Is yeah. And I, I was like, I wonder why Mick Harvey was like such a butthole to me. And then, so <clears throat> the locust played a show with him um, and the, yeah, yeah, actually in England. And I was like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Justin through one G you're the one that was like threatening to, to sue me. And he's like, Oh yeah. And then just like completely ignored me. And I was like, Oh man, like <laughs> I want you to be so cool to me. Like I highly yeah. doubt you know, Nick cave would treat me like this, but whatever. Um, man, yeah. That's a fucking bummer, man. Yeah. yeah whatever. I mean, people, I think people maybe think that other people are making money off stuff that they're not making money off. You know, maybe he, he, maybe he didn't really, maybe, you know, Nick Cave understood that you would just be barely breaking even on a thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mick Harvey's just like, you know, what are you ripping us off? You know, it's like, yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing if we were bootlegging like a Mick Harvey, you know, release, like a, some, yeah. some, some record he was on, but like, you know, we were like, it's a tribute to his work. Like, man, we were just saying like, we love you, you know, like, yeah fuck this is like all these younger new people that are going to be like what is the birthday party you know or wh whatever yeah i don't know it mm -hmm. was just a it was a lesson to be learned and i i mean i'm sure he's a fine chap you know but like my experiences with him have been pretty dismal yeah uh, but brian may that guy's fucking cool as hell so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sweethearts yeah hell yeah well we got a lot of awesome comments about people who definitely know what all this shit is about. <laughs> yeah. And the Z's record. It's like, dude, the thing that blows my mind about the Z's record beyond the fact that it's a great record is the packaging is so insane. Um, it just looks great. And it's an etched vinyl. Like it's this fucking crazy silver vinyl. Like it, I feel like people just shit the bed, not buying yeah, it. Yeah. Things, things fall through the, through the fucking cracks, <laughs> man. Yeah. It's just yeah. uh, like, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, if anybody, re okay, so let's do this. If anybody listening wants to message 31G somehow but on any social media platform, if you just PayPal, like, I don't know, six bucks should cover shipping. I'll send you the, the record. It's totally worth it. Um, I just, just cover the shipping, the shipping and packaging. That's all I care. And you need the record. If you don't have it, you need it. It's a fucking great record. Um, physically, like it's such a brilliant beautiful piece of artwork um so yeah, it's really great yeah i'll just send it to you for the cost of the shipping um, it's art uh, art by john dwyer from the ocs yeah. and coach whips like homie you know like also yeah. like did part of the hoops tour as pink and brown so that's uh, right pink and brown yeah i just i saw him in, in la right before i moved back i love um, that guy love yeah always oh, the best dude you yeah. can't he's these personalities dude it's just like you know you can't, <laughs> they broke the mold with dwyer yeah he yeah. broke the mold. He came yeah. out of the mold and then he fucking smashed it. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I should hype up Z's more on this channel because I'm always hyping up Extra Life because that's more like current, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but Z's Extra also, Life is awesome, but I Z's is the game. Yeah. I mean, Z's is like also, you know, that was like, because that was like collective with, you know, ultimately Sam being the, uh, the one, you know, mm -hmm. consistent member for the whole time. But um, yeah, man. Well, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really appreciate you coming on the show, man. It's, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, 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 dude. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I should I should have tried to hang with you when I was in LA. I fucking you know I was just locked dude, in the house. They, you guys like, played in San Diego. Extra Life played at the um, Soda Bar or something, right? That Didn't was you? years and years and years ago. Yeah, we played. I missed it. Though. Would have been 2012 at the at the at the uh, latest. Cause, cause, cause I broke that band up in 2012 and then just yeah. rec recently resurrected it last year. So I'm did you like, you play San Diego. Or am I imagining that? Uh, you know, we did, we played, yeah. we played with Upsilana Crux most of those times. Yeah. And it was that like, uh, 
yeah, we played in so at Soda Bar. No, it wasn't Soda Bar. I can't remember the, the name of the place. Yeah. It's so weird to just like forget entire gigs. Like it's just yeah. entire like you know gigs, lot, yeah. gigs that were actually good and like still yeah. forgetting them. It's just like Jesus, done a lot of stuff, man. You know. Yeah. Well, either way, that's cool that you're still doing. It. But yeah, I mean, I think I think whatever project you did or have done or will do, it's all it's all informative and important to at least to people that are fans of what you do or you know are yeah. appreciative of what you do yeah yeah so. yeah i'm less i'm less squeamish about the word fan than you are but well, fucking maybe it's a little more uh you know it sucks it's a <laughs> shitty word but I'll, I'll say this like from like for me saying like i'm a fan of your work that seems like not a big deal but when someone says like my fans that right. seems like Kind of fucking well, you, well, you're, well, you're self-describing. Yeah. I mean, one thing I have learned about about fa is, is to not fan zone people because like I've never been like because the thing is, yeah, like I, well, there, there's the thing, right? In Z's, we didn't we had fans, but it didn't really feel like fans. And if we did have fans, it wasn't my fans. But then Extra Life, I'm the main guy. So it's like, oh, shit, like I can say that I have fans, even if I'm not being a dick about it. I was like, holy shit, this is weird. But then the shit that I learned over time, which should be obvious to anyone who's not a fucking ego maniacal piece of shit, is you realize when you're making music that's this niche, anyone who's a fan, not anyone, but mm -hmm. probably if someone's a fan of your music, probably you're going to vibe on a personal level or it's yeah. very likely that they could be your friend. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. there's a high likelihood. Whereas like if you play in like the Rolling Stones or something, it's like someone mm -hmm. liking your band doesn't mean you have that much in common, but if someone listens to your shit, it's like there's some common ground. It, I mean, of course, there's but also like a Rolling Stone, you're untouchable. You know what I'm saying? Like well, you can't just go, like access fucking Mick Jagger, but like you, you could access you and be like, well, I, uh, I, I would say like as much as I was like trying to find j genre titles like annoying, I think I, I would prefer to say like musical f friends. Like yeah. that would be cooler than like my fans. My musical friends are the people that like like my music. You know, yeah, like, those no, are my I, feel, I feel that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just it just it just took me a while to realize like if someone writes me and they're like, you, you know, and they're like, I I'm really into what you do, like, and I also play music. It's like there's a high likelihood that I'm gonna kind at least kind of like what they're doing, if not really <laughs> like it. Just just uh -huh. because who the fuck is into this stuff? Like you know what yeah. I mean? It's like I mean the the weirder you get, the more it's like you know it's. But that's it's, like it's, interesting too because then it, then that like shows the like sort of um, uh, musical tree or something because it, like there's like the locust and then there's three one G and then there's Z's and then there's you know John Dwyer, Dwyer and like you know it's like going out and like we're connecting to like whoever it's like brian chippendale playing with bjork or oh did he know, do that uh, or, or i'm trying to think wait a like, gig man wait, wait to like I, I mean i'm trying to think of like something insane off the top of my head you know like oh so and so collaborated with like one of us collaborated with that person yeah That's one of us i know there is a vibe i i remember when um when uh do, do you know colin marston from 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 fucking uh Behold the Octopus and Kralis oh, yeah. and those bands. Yeah. I mean, when, when he joined Gorguts, that was like your boy, like being in the NBA. Like, you know what I mean? That was yeah. just like, you know. I mean, Gorguts are great, but Bjork is like fucking no, no, next. No, no, like no, you true, can't, where true. are you going to go from there? You know, that's like. No, true, true, true. David yeah, Bowie, yeah. like shit, you know. Um, Gorga, I'm not trying to, I love that band too. But um, I'm, I'm, yeah. almost, I'm almost being kind of humorous about the fact that like, we would be such fucking weird dorks that we would view Gorguts as like, as like a Bjork <laughs> gig. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's to us. Like, what? like you know, I don't know. But uh, yeah. There's the um, Rolling Stones and there's Gorguts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all big. It's all, it's all big stuff. It's all big. But there, there are these weird perceptions, man, of like what's big and small, dude. And, and I, it's, it's kind of awesome to get confused. Cause like, I, I remember like, I remember you telling me about some day job you were working like back in the day. And I was like, what? Like he has a day job. And it's just like, bro, like that's, yeah, not we have that. to have those. It's like, that's <laughs> not that weird. Like, yeah. but I'm thinking like, dude, the locust, that's the yeah. biggest band in the world. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, we all have had day jobs at forever. Right. Right. Yeah. right. It's, yeah. But, um, word man. Well, again, okay, there we go, dude. Thank you so much i'll uh, yeah i'll be hitting you up about whatever and cool uh, yeah. i'm so glad we got to this and yeah, i hope we get to play together at least hang out together yeah yeah absolutely next man. time we're gonna throw marilyn manson in the pool 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to, man. I wanted to. It was just like, I, you know, my friend. I mean, could you imagine being t- like, this wasn't me, but my uh, associate at the time. I mean, imagine being too yacked out for a fucking Marilyn Manson after party. It's like, yeah. you're too on drugs. You got to get out of here. I mean, that's huh. clearly someone who's pushing the fucking boundaries of like ass, assholic uh behavior and but, me uh, i'm like how can we just ruin this and what can i steal that's right that's <laughs> yeah 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 no <laughs> doubt yeah. but yeah i mean yeah i'm gonna be on the road more because now extra life is back and we're actually gonna like do we're actually gonna do shit man so i'll be i'll, I'll be out there and i'll send you the new one that came out last year so, cool yeah. cool i would love to do shows together in, in some capacity yeah mm. you heard it <laughs> you heard it here first you said you said it not me yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. said it not me yeah. all right clear, clear, clear channel on the horn Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's I only play Clear Channel, <laughs> and I only play Clear Channel, and I refer to my fans. But I refer to my friends who don't even like my music as fans. I refer to my family as my fans. Yeah, if they haven't even heard. This is the yeah. level of that's how that's how New York I am. I only listen. I only listen to Madball. I only have fans. <laughs> You're killing me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Um, word, amazing, okay. Justin. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thanks. Thanks so much, brother. And thanks to everybody on the comment section and stuff, too. You guys are great. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hell yeah. All right. right. (laughs) See you guys. Peace, man. Bye.